Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be discussing this new study that once again definitively proves the ideas that we have about the expansion of the universe and the ideas behind the Big Bang. Or that essentially the universe is expanding and is slowly cooling down. But more specifically what this study was able to prove is actually the temperature of the universe when the universe was only approximately 880 million years old or almost 12 billion years ago. So let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with the basics. So today when it comes to trying to understand what happened in the universe a long time ago, most of the data comes from this. The cosmic microwave background. The background representing the earliest light in the universe. Although to be more exact, what it actually represents is the event that occurred when the universe was about 379,000 years old. Something that happened right around here and this is when the universe got cool enough for the charged electrons and the charged protons to start combining and create what's known as the neutral hydrogen. With this in the process creating the light that's visible right here. But back then all of this was very hot, it was approximately 3000 Kelvin. And over time it's believed that all of this cooled down with the temperature today standing at 2.73 Kelvin, which can be also described as a frequency of 160 gigahertz. And so from this time right here up until today, as the universe expanded, all of this light that used to be really energetic and was essentially really hot, eventually got redshifted and became what it is today, roughly around 2.7 Kelvin or almost absolute zero. But even though this particular idea has been confirmed using other studies, this new study does it in a really interesting way. They were actually physically able to measure the temperature by using an extremely ancient galaxy where something was produced inside with that object then interacting with the cosmic microwave background, producing the effects that could then be used to measure the actual temperature of the CMB back then. Ok, let me explain this in a few more steps. So first of all, this investigation focused on this very ancient starburst galaxy that you see right here. The galaxy referred to as HFLS3. But this here is an artistic representation. The actual optical image of this galaxy is right here, it's barely visible. I guess it's a little bit easier to see it in this image, but it's really in the infrared that you can sort of see it the best. This right here is the actual infrared image of the galaxy. Now obviously James Webb telescope, which is the most powerful infrared telescope ever made, is going to be able to take a better picture of this, but we don't really have that yet. And so anyway, being a starburst galaxy means that this galaxy is producing a lot of stars at the same time. And it also generally means that there is a lot of activity, a lot of interaction, and it also becomes possible to use some of the signals we know from other galaxies to potentially see how this galaxy interacts with its environment, specifically with the cosmic microwave background. And so for this particular study, the scientists used what's known as NOEMA, which stands for Northern Extended Millimeter Array, and actually sort of looks like this, this is a pretty cool image taken by one of the scientists working there. And we're then able to collect more data about this particular galaxy, focusing on discovering some more familiar objects. Now in this particular case, this galaxy, being so far away, is really really old. As I mentioned previously, this is when the universe was only about 880 million years old. And so when using the NOEMA telescope, the scientists discovered a typical water cloud that was most likely produced by potentially a supernova or some other interaction with molecular clouds nearby. And the thing about the water clouds is that we know quite a lot about them, even from our own galaxy. And so generally by seeing the emissions from these clouds, it becomes possible to see how they interact with the environment nearby. And because it's believed that back then, because of the expansion of the universe, the universe did not cool down enough just yet, it was still a little bit warmer, theoretically the scientists expect that it's actually going to leave certain marks when interacting with certain types of clouds, for example. More specifically, the cosmic microwave background as it passes through this water cloud should leave a certain mark. If this cloud was about 63 Kelvin, it would produce a certain type of a frequency that should be observable from this particular galaxy. And more specifically, by observing the frequencies we see coming from this region, and by assuming that the cloud itself was about 63 Kelvin in temperature, it becomes possible to work out the actual temperature of the cosmic microwave background at that particular period of time, with the temperature as you can see in this image being about 20 Kelvin. 
And so, in other words, the cloud and the microwave background radiation interacted producing very specific emissions. Something that would not be possible if the universe was a little bit older and if the cosmic microwave background was already a little bit cooler. And so, in other words, all this relies on the idea of the water molecules interacting with light of very specific frequency and very specific temperature. And based on the observations and the analysis in the paper, the scientists definitively showed that, well, basically, this ancient water cloud interacted with the microwave background radiation that had to be approximately 20 Kelvin, otherwise it would not be producing these emissions, or these very specific absorption lines that were detected coming from the galaxy. Although to be more precise, the actual calculations determined the temperature to be between about 16 Kelvin and 30 Kelvin. So the 20 Kelvin here is just the suggestion from some of the previous studies. In other words, for all we know, it could have been actually a little bit warmer or maybe just a little bit colder. But all of this definitely matches with some of the previous predictions, and so here the theory seems to be sort of confirmed. But more intriguingly, what this kind of implies is that in the beginning, for the first few hundreds of millions of years, there might have been some really interesting and very unusual properties in the universe, specifically because of the interaction with the hotter CMB, that do not exist anymore. As a matter of fact, all of these effects very likely disappeared in the first one and a half billion years after the creation of the universe. Although I guess I have to be careful with the word creation here. We still don't really know how all of this began. We just kind of know where we are right now and what most likely happened for the past 13 and a half billion years. More importantly, the CMB today is just way too cold to do any of this. So we're not actually going to be seeing any of these interactions anymore. And so all of this can only be done with some of the oldest galaxies. And that's kind of the next step for the scientists behind the study. They now are hoping to look at more ancient galaxies out there and possibly discover some more of these clouds and possibly even measure some more temperature in other regions of the universe as well. And as the James Webb Telescope becomes operational, it's going to be able to see all of these galaxies and all of these interactions with a lot more detail than we currently have. And so by finding more of these interactions and more of these galaxies, the scientists are hoping to understand a little bit more about the expansion of the universe and solve the mysteries of the unusual dark energy that seems to be causing the expansion. But I guess for now, that's all I wanted to mention. It's a very intriguing study, it's a very interesting confirmation, and it once again implies that our understanding of the universe seems to be pretty spot on. But more discoveries and more scientific studies will definitely help us understand what actually happened in the beginning. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.